All right, in this video, we're going to look at a hitch tightener, also referred to as an anti-rattle stabilizer. Now, the one I bought was good for one and a quarter to two inch receivers, hitches, and it's good for pretty much all the classes for vehicles, uh, one, two, three, and four. So, the two things that I carry are a trailer on a hitch and a bike carrier. Alright, now I don't have much of a problem with the bicycle rack because that is bolted on there. And notice that it's bolted pretty far back on the hitch here. So just by tightening the bolt, because you don't want to lose that, the whole thing will fall off. Just by tightening the bolt down really tight, uh, it really doesn't make any noise. So all the noise is coming from in here, not at the receiver end. Now the brand I decided to purchase was Rhino, and this was $18. So. Uh, what it comes with is, of course, a piece of paper, which is actually the instructions and a little bit of extra info if you want it. The one piece that is going to capture the anti-rattle device right here. And it comes with uh, washer nuts and... All right, so first let's look at the problem. And I'll just put this in here temporarily. So, what's the problem? That's the problem <laughs> we're eliminating. You're going to need a combination wrench or a three-quarter inch uh, open-end wrench here. Well, first of all, I'd like to point out that the trailer is also going to make some noise just here on the ball. It's not as vigorous as the hitch, but it is going to make some noise. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install it as instructed. Um, I don't have my pin on the hitch. I have other hitches, locking hitches and stuff like that. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter what is going on is there is a pivot point at the pin. And that pivot point, when this raises up, the back end collides with the receiver. So that's what we are eliminating. I'm not putting my hitch pin in. I'm, this is, you know, for demos. I'm not setting it up. So the way this is designed to be assembled is you place the U-bolt over the hitch up against the end of the receiver. Right here, like that. Next, you saw it slide the bolt plate up here so that it touches the bottom of the receiver. So let me get that in position. Then the washer, lock washer, and nut goes on. So I'll get that going. Now, you can see that as you tighten the bolts, this lip comes up and touches the receiver. And I only have it finger tight. But even just finger tight, that pretty much eliminates the hitch noise, almost. So as soon as I snug it up, let me put a few snugs on here. A little bit more. So everything, you need to use two hands because as you tighten it down, it, it has a tendency to want to walk on you. So, still have a little bit of left and right 
but no up and down. So let me get it really snug and tight. All right, and you really need to crank down on this thing for several reasons. Uh, one is there's going to be quite a bit of weight on there to uh, jostle that thing around. And two, as you can see, it really starts to separate and you need to get it really tight so that the bolts don't come off because there's a lot of vibration when you're driving down the road I mean just static looking here at it statically ah oh, you say good enough when in fact <laughs> this thing gets quite a bit of abuse going down the road I mean it's just absolutely ridiculous how much uh, how, how much force is involved in this so anyway it eliminates that noise even though there's going to be a little bit of play on the ball where the trailer hitches onto the ball there will be some there so that as they say is that now I have these little end caps that I thought I would stick on the bottom here and the reason I did that is I thought well if the bolts came loose then then they won't come off but then I thought, well, what if I put it on the other way? So let me try that. Again, the reason I'm going to flip it around is because, you know, if this bolt comes loose, or if this nut comes loose, boom, there you go, you lose everything. And then you'll hear your rattle again. You know, you lost something. All right, so let's flip this around, see if that works. So here it is flipped around, now it's on top. And in addition to my idea of putting my little uh, threads on there when I tie, after I tighten it down, it'll be more to grip onto. After I thought of that, I also thought of drilling a hole through there and putting a clip in there, a smaller one of course. But I thought about drilling a hole through the bolt or the U-bolt to prevent it from coming off well let me tighten it down real quick I'm going to use a ratchet of course they say you know put your hand in front of the camera <laughs> they say to uh, you know do a little bit of time a little bit at a time on each side All right, so in my mind, if the bolts come loose now, let's see, we are, you know, moving the whole vehicle around now. So it's clamped down. There's no rattling. I can also put my little safety stops on there, if you will. <laughs> my brilliant idea. Or, you know, I could drill a hole through there, I guess, but it looks pretty close to the end. Also, I thought about getting some flanged bolts. There's some flanged bolts with serrates on the flanged area, and I could put that down onto the washer or even the lock washer and lock it down that way. So I was thinking of uh, ways of improving it, but the main thing is uh, it doesn't rattle, so it's, it, it really helps out quite a bit in that it eliminates noise. And noise can be a big distraction or it can be a big alert if you do hear a noise you know something's going on you need to pull over and figure out what the heck's going on and you've eliminated one source of the noise anyway those are all my thoughts on it uh, I think that I am going to install it as shown as opposed to the instructions which show it being placed on the bottom. There's another reason for that too. I was talking to my friend Isaac, Isaac Newton, yeah I'm that old, and the weight is going down and gravity is going down. So if you're pushing this up and the back of the hitch is pressed against the bottom of the receiver, 
you're actually fighting gravity because now you have this pushed up you got the weight of the ball just its own weight and then you got the tongue weight of the trailer all of that is pushing down so why not push down to begin with I think you're getting a much better uh, physics relationship between the force of gravity and the weight that's going to be on the end of the ball and the anti-rattle prevention so anyway that's my idea that's how I'm going to rig it up uh, those few threads unless I get a different bolt like a flange bolt that I was thinking about where there's uh, on the flange end it looks like a nut and washer all combined together flange end has like serrades on it to help lock it down I could eliminate the uh, lock washer and just bolt this down to the flat washer but anyway uh, the whole point is if I if I can get a few more threads exposed I might drill and stick a pin through there as a safety uh, the other thing I was thinking is this is also a good idea just to put a cap on it I might cut them down and make them smaller I didn't realize they'd be that long uh, because water guess what's back here you know when you're trailering something it's gonna be in the rain right <laughs> it's gonna get all your equipment dirty whatever you got in a trailer so all of the rain and everything is going to be allowed to escape whereas if you had it on the other way the way you were instructed to put it on all of the water let's get the glare off all of the water can drip down and be caught by the bolts and the threads and you know just stay in there especially if I use my little protective caps to keep the nuts from backing off and and uh, disappearing on the road somewhere breaking someone's windshield when it falls off uh, you know I just thought it would be a good idea so install this upside down with respect to the way the instructions told you to do it uh, achieve the same result it'll also move the plate out of the way of my safety chain holder so my safety chains hook onto here and this plate will be out of the way so if, if something if the trailer comes off the hitch and the safety chains go tight they they won't get in they won't be interfered with by the uh, anti-rattle clip here so that's my video uh, again these are available anywhere from eleven dollars to twenty five dollars I chose the Rhino USA uh, that was just my choice of course they're not a sponsor it's my own money that I bought this with after doing some homework and research and it says always secure the tightener plate on the bottom side in big letters right there on the bottom side of your receiver tow bar etc do not hand tighten use three-quarter open wrench or socket to ensure completeness now they say bottom in big letters right there and I'm saying top <laughs> I'm saying top is better. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, if you have any comments or if you think that their way is better than putting it on the top, uh, again, I'm thinking of bolt loss. Uh, you know, if this comes loose, it's going to be extremely difficult for it to unwind itself all the way off and fall off, especially if I put a cap on it. And if I do it the other way and put a cap on it, it might not be able to wind itself out. Maybe, maybe not. You know, you're going 60, 70 miles an hour down the road in the wind and the rain. You know, all kinds of things can happen. All right, well, just wanted to show you the uh, hitch silencer mainly. Oh yeah, when I take it off, I don't have to worry about catching all the washers either. Or if it was on the other way, I'd have to worry about that. Oh well.
Again, thank you for watching.